The episodes reviewing McKellen and Abler are out. They're done. The Abler's really done. Nothing left. But now it's time to honor some Vikings. Let's do this. <laughs> Highland Park Viking Honor. Highland Park Viking Honor is a 12-year-old single malt scotch whiskey. It is considered a Highland distillery by some references, but I would say it's more of an Island distillery. Not to be confused with Isla. Isla is a very specific spot uh, off the coast of Scotland. Island distilleries are the ones that are located in the islands other than Isla and they have a different profile than you'll find in a Speyside Highland Scotch, which is what we reviewed with the McAllen and the Avalor. Viking Honor was created to celebrate and honor the Vikings that uh, created the heritage of the Orkney Isles and to this day still influences a lot of their culture. This whiskey was launched in the late 1970s as part of the core range of the Highland Park whiskeys. The color is all natural and quite light. Uh, that golden color isn't dark at all considering that it's aged for 12 years in European oak sherry casks. You would expect some whiskeys will be very dark and if you look at bourbons, if you put a bourbon in a cask for 12 years, it's definitely gonna be dark. The difference is the Orkney Isles are pretty cold. That's way far up there and uh, you don't get much heat, you don't get much movement of the whiskey in and out of the wood, so you end up with this beautiful golden color. Island Park 12 is a single malt scotch whiskey at 43% or 86 proof, and it is, I believe it's all natural. I don't believe they do any kind of filtering of this, although it doesn't explicitly say that. Even though it's 43%, I believe it punches a little bit above its weight because there is a peatiness to this whiskey. Uh, it's not as strong as an Isla peat, but there is some there. So why do some distilleries use peat to malt their barley? And what is malting? Malting is the process of spreading out the barley. They usually use a floor or some, uh, some area that they can spread it out so it's not too thick, maybe just a, a couple inches of barley and they give it some moisture and then they rake it and watch it. I believe it's for about 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer, but they want that barley to think it's going to grow. They want it to begin to sprout just a little bit and that creates the sugars in the barley. That's what gives whiskey uh, a bit of sweetness. Without that, with just the unmalted barley, you wouldn't get as much sweetness, you wouldn't get as much of the flavors that you get with malting. Now to stop the malting process, you have to heat the barley. To heat the barley, you need a fuel source. And when you're in a place like Orkney or Isla, and you have a, a rocky, grassy, uh, basically peaty island full of everything but trees or not a lot of trees you use what's around now for for centuries they used peat to cook with to heat their homes and it just made sense if we're going to use this fuel to do that we're going to use this fuel to stop this germination process we're going to heat our barley with a fuel that we have abundance of which is peat now that affects the barley and gives it that smoky, peaty flavor. They didn't start out and say, hmm, I wonder if we could create a whiskey that's just peaty and smoky. It had nothing to do with it. In fact, a lot of things over the years in the creation of whiskey are just accidents. They're things that they did to make the process easier 
to create an alcohol. And then we went, wow, they were so smart. They, they learned how to use this grain or treat that grain like this. And most of the time it's what's local, what's available, and how quickly can we create whiskey? <laughs> we want whiskey. Let's just make it however we can. Now you've heard me rave about Isla whiskeys before, so I enjoy a peaty whiskey. I think it's glorious. I am thrilled that they didn't have trees in abundance on these islands and that they needed to use something like peat. Let's go ahead and dig into the Highland Park and see what we have here. Now you see, uh, as we looked at the bottle, it's got a nice light color, but this is a 12 year old and it is European oak and that has the, um, their, their used sherry casks. So right away, you're going to get sherry influences in this whiskey on the nose and on the taste. That, that's what I get on the, on the, on the first, um, the first nosing. There's sweetness. I can tell it's from sherry, dried fruits. There's a little bit of smoke, but it's, it's not overwhelming. It's not the first thing that I get in nosing this. Some honey. I believe the website said heather honey. I have no idea what heather honey is, so I can't give that note. But definitely a sweet. There's definitely honey there. And maybe some darker fruits. Now the taste follows the nose. So there's a sweetness. There's a little bit of bite there. I think that's from the, uh, the peat, a little spiciness. Maybe the, uh, maybe the oak has come through on that. I'm getting um, like raisins or dried plums. Um, maybe a little citrus. Uh, not getting citrus on the nose, but maybe an orange peel. More of that honey. They say heather honey. I say I don't know what heather honey is, but I'll give them honey. It's a nice long finish. And the spice stays around. Sherry stays around. Very warm. Yeah, I love the finish on that. Let's go ahead and add a little water, see what it does. Now water for this should be pretty good. It's not that it's a high proof, but it is a pretty potent whiskey. The peat's gonna give it some strength to be able to fight against any dilution. Mm, the nose is even more honeyed. Less spiky. I'm getting more, more of the dried fruit. I'm getting a little more sherry. I'm definitely getting raisins now. Uh, maybe some dark chocolate on the finish. The finish is is less hot, um, but I'm getting more of a, um, a non-sweet chocolate on the finish. I actually like the finish with a little bit of water added. I don't add water to this usually. Maybe I should because I think I think I'm actually enjoying the Highland Park more with whiskey. It wasn't one of my favorite whiskeys. It wasn't one of my go-to whiskeys. Obviously, I drank enough of it that I don't hate it. But it's um, it's kind of a runner up to Isla whiskeys for me. The water takes the edge off. I'm getting a lot of, um, hmm, a little bit of sour notes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little more sour in the end there. Maybe I put too much water in the first little 
bit of water was was pretty good. I don't I don't know if I like the the finish with that much water. Mm. Yeah, there's a it's now more sour on the on the finish. I don't I like the first little bit of water. I like a little bit of water in here adding two uh droppers full. I don't I don't care for much. I, I preferred it with just a, a little tiny bit of water. So try it, see what you think, put it in the comments what your favorite way of having it is and let me know what taste you're getting out of it. They describe it as Orkney in a glass. I'll put a link to the tasting video that they have online. It's uh it's very much an Orkney video. You can you can tell this guy looks like a Viking. It's it's really nice to watch. Highland Park Viking Honor is pretty easy to get. I don't think I've ever had a problem getting it. Uh, it's it's very available around me. It's a good 12-year whiskey at a at a good price. I believe I paid 43 for this bottle. It can go as high around me in the mid 50s. Um, maybe 52, 53 was what I looked up just just recently. I would um, I'd probably rank this as a if you want a little bit of peat. If you want a little bit of sherry influence, this is a good compromise. It's it's more peaty than a Macallan, less sherried than a Macallan, less peaty than an Isla whiskey like Ardbeg or Laphroaig. It's a good compromise. I, I would I would jump into it if you are looking for something between those two types of whiskeys. So I'm curious how you've enjoyed the comparison of the three whiskeys do you want me to do more of that let me know in the comments what do you think of highland park is it one of your go-to whiskeys let me know about that and let me know what flavors and experiences you've had with it i would love to, to hear your opinions and your tasting notes as always i appreciate that if you enjoyed this video give me a like please subscribe i can always use subscribers and um, bang that bell so that you get notified when a new Whiskey Riffs video is ready for viewing. I've had some people request that I review rye whiskeys. I'm gonna warn you up front, I'm not a big rye whiskey fan. I've got a couple bottles in there that I'm going to review. Um, I think I'll do it in the next video, why not? And you will have to teach me why you like rye whiskey and what I'm doing wrong because my tastes just haven't come into lockstep with it. But uh, the more I sit with this Highland Park 12, the more I'm enjoying it. So, cheers.